915 on the morning show with Jeff and Will. We are back and joining us as she does every Monday at this time is Tina Traster from the Rockland County Business Journal Editor-in-Chief. Good morning, Tina. How are you this morning? Good morning. I am peachy keen. How is everybody over there? We're doing fine on this post-Super Bowl Sunday, Monday morning. Did you uh, partake in any uh, Super Bowl events over the weekend? No, I did not. I, I had to be told that it was the Super Bowl weekend. Ah, <laughs> I see. All right, so we got the enthusiasm level already, similar to my own, uh, but I luckily figured Figured out beforehand so I could set something up. At All the right. End and well, let's let's talk watch. about let's let's talk about some other things. Um, okay. First of all, I wanted to um, to to talk about farmers markets. Okay. Um, the town of Orangetown is continuing to collect feedback on a prospective uh, weekly farmers market mm -hmm. in Pearl River. Um, to date, from what we understand, uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm to get a farmers market going. Pearl River has had its uh, fits and starts over with farmers markets. They've had them. They haven't lasted. Um, I don't know why they haven't cracked the code um, in that hamlet yet, uh, but the, the town put out a, um, um, a, 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 a survey uh, asking people all sorts of questions about, you know, what day, what time, do they want this, what, what sort of foods they would buy. Now, we know that... The town is um, in conversation with Joe Serra, um, who is the seasoned operator. At, I don't know if you've ever been to the Sunday Piermont Farmers Market. I have not. Uh, he, so he, he's, 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 um, he deserves kudos, really, for having taken um, what started out as a... Um, there, there were two things that used to go on in Piermont. One was an indoor farmers market at an art gallery that he used to call the Souk. And then there, there used to be an outdoor farmer's market um, behind the M&T Bank, and that was kind of anemic. And Sarah, whose indoor market really evolved, took over the, the whole operation, and he now runs a, um, a year-round indoor, well, outdoor, actually, it's outdoor year-round farmer's market that has turned into be uh, maybe, maybe the most successful one in the county. Um, Nyack has had a long-standing farmer's market, but... I think for some reason, I don't know what the, what the reason is, but, but, but here in Rockland County, you know, unlike in, if, if you go to Westchester or, um, or Ulster, every town has a farmer's market. And for some reason in this county, um, we, we just, we haven't really been able to get enough of them to be, to be up and running and successful. I think that Clarkstown's farmer's market didn't make it. If I'm wrong, somebody can call in and let me know. I know they had a farmer's market a couple of years ago, but I, I think that that, um, that died. Um, Nyack, of course, has had a longstanding farmer's market. Um, I, I, I'm not too sure that, that we have many farmer's markets in this county. Um, you know, we do have the Farm uh, Alliance, which um, does sell produce, but it, it, there are some very viable farmers markets in Westchester and actually in nor northern New Jersey. And um, here in, in this county, uh, once a county filled with farms, um, I, I think there is a great need to bring the farmers market back. So we'll see if Pearl River um, finds its way, and we'll see if, if Joe Sierra um, wants to sign up for that or whether they find another operator. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know that, that um, you know, uh, the, the town, and what also just interesting about this is, is that once again we see the town taking a very active role in trying to make something happen in Orangetown. And um, that, that sort of in and of itself is, is kind of interesting because in farmers markets, I mean, they're, they're usually run by nonprofits or independent operators. Um, but I, I think that this initiative, by way of a survey, um, has been a, has been a good thing, an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, regarding this topic, you do have a caller if you'd like to take it. Oh, sure. We do have uh, Gracie on the line. Gracie, good morning. You're on with Tina Traster from the Rockland County Business Journal. Good morning, hey, Tina. And I guess you and I are the only people that maybe didn't watch the Super Bowl yesterday. Yeah. I read. All right, go, Gracie. <laughs> and maybe watch the little Netflix. Okay, well, ah. I, I, I just want to make a comment about the farmer's market. This is my opinion um, and my thoughts on the matter. Uh, I don't think we're enough people in Rockland 
that are the, you know, the wine and croissant crowd? I really don't. I think, uh, and the prices in the farmer market are more than the supermarket. And now that the supermarket went crazy, I can't see how the farmer's market is going to uh, be able to do better. Do you, you know what I'm saying, Ben? It has already done. I mean, how much honey can you use? I mean, you know what I'm saying? And uh, some lo- lotions, you know, because when I go to California, we do have, you know, artsy, crafty fairs. Well, and, I, think, I mean, I think people, it, people yeah. look, but they don't buy. That's, well, you know, that's my opinion. I, I, think, I think that, you know, there are a lot of artisanal products and honey and soap and, and what have you. But I also think that, that you do get... Um, you know, produce. I mean, Conklin's comes to the farmers markets, and we, we, you know, I think the bottom line is you're right. It is a balancing act, and as it is, we have sticker shock at the supermarket, but we also want to try to support farms so that we keep open space open. It's 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 a tough balancing act. I hear you, Gracie. No, no, no. I I agree. I want uh, open space too. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying, why might be? You know, it hasn't. Caught on because I know in Burbank every Saturday morning with Burbank, California, they have a farmers market and it is crowded. And I go look and you know, but I always watch my pennies, so I don't really buy. Listen, Tina, thank you for All listening right. to my babbling. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you, Gracie. Um, I don't know if you wanted to switch topics. We do have Ray on the line, and he wanted to ask about the animal shelter. So. Oh. I- um, I don't know if I can answer that, but okay, go ahead. I, okay, we can put them on. Ray, you're on with uh, Tina Traster. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Tina. The, uh, the specific issue that I'm, I'm questioning is because I haven't heard much re- resolution on it. This location, um, is it or is it not in a flood zone? I, yes. grew, I worked uh, much of my adult life in a flood, uh, flood zone area in, in New Jersey, yes. and that, that is a real issue and certainly a no-go if, if that's the case for the animal shelter. Has, has, that, has that particular building location flooded in the last, say, 25 years? Yeah, the, according to FEMA, uh, that Beach Road is it's definitely in a flood zone. So it, it seems to me that there are a handful of environmental issues that I, I believe have not been properly addressed, and it just seems that... Um, you know, it, it seems that there's no um, real scrutiny. Uh, I, I don't know what agency, uh, you know, comes in and takes a look and says and, and, and green lights this. It seems that, that Rock and Green has tremendous independence um, to, to make the decisions on its own. And, um, but this would be a game changer. And uh, surely somebody who lives anywhere around that area must know if that, if that particular location has flooded in, in the last, let's say, 25 years, even that would be, that would be just a game changer as far as putting a, um, an animal shelter. And if not, that's fine. But if, if that is a flooding location, then it would be, it would be very foolish to go ahead with it. Uh, agreed. I mean, I, there, to me, there are several environmental issues down there. Um, one is flooding. Two is, is the uh, emanation of odor from the Joint Regional Sewage Authority. And the third one, um, almost, in fact, most egregious, is the proposal to build a 450,000-square-foot distribution center with trucks right across the street from there. And even if it's sited 100 feet away, the sound of the noise, the grinding trucks, the, the ongoing noise, uh, for uh, animals inside of a shelter, I think is, is actually sheer torture. So the problem seems to be is that um, the county has no, the legislature has no say in this, the county seems to have no say in this. It seems to be entirely up to Rockland Green. So it's really going to have to take the citizens of Rockland County to step up. Um, if you'd like, I know that they have an upcoming meeting. I believe it's February 23rd. They have an open meeting once a month on a Thursday at 5 o'clock. People have been coming and expressing uh, their concerns. Um, I don't know that, they're, that anything is being done to slow them down. In fact, they seem to have sped up in terms of leasing the building and, and hiring an architect. Um, who's where on where is that meeting held, uh, Tina? It, it's held in the Clarkstown Town Hall on the second floor. Okay. All right. So try to make that meeting because um, 
Yeah, it seems that there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of concern about that location and that particular building, uh, but it seems like it's on the fast track, and it, it just seems that there's no intervention, as, 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 you're, as you're pointing out, is that, you know, if this is a flood zone, why are we, why are we putting a shelter in a flood zone? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Ray. Um, we've got two more callers. You've spawned a lot. Not all on this topic. Um, one more on this topic. She said it would be brief, and then we've got one caller about the uh, the cider work story. Um, but Mary's on first. Good morning, Mary. You had something on flood zones. Yes, uh, Tina uh, is interesting. My husband and I had been looking for a house to relocate to. We were from Pearl River, so we were looking in Rockland, and we looked for years. And and finally, my husband said to the realtor. Could you find a place that does, a house that doesn't have a uh, sump pump? And she said, "All of Rockland has sump pumps. All of Rockland is in a flood zone." No, so, no that's, that's 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 not true. I mean, I live on the top of a mountain. There, they, they're oh, even on top of hilltops. I mean, in Pearl River, down in Norishon, my friend <clears throat> had was on top of a hill, and uh, she had water coming down the hill in her in her garage. It's yeah. hard to find a place in Rockland that doesn't get water. That's true. We, we are overbuilt. Well, thank you, Mary. Um, we do have Stan on the line, and he wanted to talk to you about the Rockland Cider Works. Uh, good morning, Stan. You're on with Tina. Yeah, hi. Good morning. So, um, you know, uh, Rockland Cider Works uh, recently actually sent out an email, a very sad email. Uh, it almost seems like uh, it's going to be the end of the story for them. And uh, the reason why I'm calling, Tina, is because, you know, I've seen you post multiple updates to the story, but I've never actually seen you post any uh, support for this, uh, uh, for this agricultural uh, venture that's been out there, that's been there for, for years. And, you know, I think, you know, I don't know why you wouldn't be supporting them. Well, we, 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 we're a news organization, so what we're reporting on is, is the story. Uh, we're trying to, keep, actually, we're trying to keep people up to date um, on, this, on this issue, which I think we've done better, or we are the only publication, I think, that's kept the, the uh, population, um, the residents, up to date on this. Um, I can tell you that it's not over. It's not over. Um, I know I, I, we quoted from that sad email that they posted, but the truth is, is that the issue is not determined yet. Uh, the 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 the, 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 um, the disgruntled um, neighbors, uh, you know, were, were sort of painted into a corner and told, okay, well then go ahead and post a bond. And when push came to shove, they didn't want to post a bond, and I think that this is, has created an opening for the farm. To possibly go back to the town and sort out its its problems, with the town, which legitimately it, it does have, um, but I, I think that um, you know nowhere has, has has the story been fairly laid out uh, in terms of what is going on on, on all three legal fronts. It's, it's a very complicated story. Um, you know, it takes a lot to get your head around all the different uh, zones that, that that this is that the fight is going on in, um, and just. By as an aside, um, if you've been listening to me on the radio for for all of these months, I have said that I think that the cidery is a valuable asset for the community. That it's the only one that we have. Um, that it that it helps with tourism. Um, so I, I think uh, Jeff and Will can probably um, uh, tell you that that I have said that that you know, I, I do see it as as a great asset for the community. Well, I, I think it should be, you should put that in your commentary when you post, because it doesn't seem like uh, that, you know, again, what you posted does, has not been, seems to be very supportive. It's just my opinion. Yeah, but that's you not know? her job is not to be supportive one way or the other. Her job is to report the news. And personally, I, if you're asking me what I think, I, it's, it's a complicated, like Tina said, it is a complicated issue. It's, you're talking about putting a bar basically in the middle of a, of a, of a community. Except, that, it's, except it's not a true bar per se. You know, they have. Uh, you know they, they they have product that they do serve, and I think it could be uh, you know. No, but it's I, in a, it, it's in no, a community but, but, that where people are. It's a residential neighborhood. It's I, not like on Main Street in Pearl River. So you know I, what, I hear what you. I, what, except what I, that, I, that wasn't the argument. The argument was all the noise and the music. That's what started it. Nobody seemed to care about the quote unquote bar of, of cider. What, uh, what, I, what, I, what I said the last time I was talking on the issue is, wouldn't it be great if you could get the neighbors, the town, and the cidery in a room together and try to work it out? I, 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 I did say that. I mean, I, I know that's not, nice. 
I know it's probably naive because now, now this we can't even happen. agree whether to shoot down balloons in the sky or not. Oh, We're never going to agree on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, yes, this is much more important than those balloons in the sky. So well, I don't know about that, but okay, it's, it's we can't even agree on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, for anyway. Us. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe, they'll, maybe when they start serving hydrogen dioxide, it'll all be okay. Yeah. Actually, you know, I, I actually quoted that wrong. It's not hydrogen dioxide. You know, I was half asleep it's when I did that. Peroxide, it's peroxide, yes. It, no, 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 no. It's dihydrogen oxide is what oh, I was complaining about. Dihydrogen oxide. Dihydrogen, yeah. It's totally different. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Completely different. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. <laughs> well, Thank you, Mike. I know, I know it's, it's, it's 930, but if I had a couple more minutes, there was one last thing I did want to address, unless, unless, I'm, unless I'm timed out here. Uh, no, you can, yeah, we got, we got the time. Okay, okay. Well, I just want to say that I did listen to uh, to George on the mo uh, on the radio this morning, and he described the judge's order um, on uh, on the term limits case correctly. Um, basically, that he and Don Franchino had disqualified themselves on the vote to hire outside counsel, and it only took you know one more vote to put the kibosh on the town's ability to hire outside attorney. But what the judge missed and what the motion asked for, because I was in court, okay, that day, was for the judge to decide if the town attorney is conflicted because the town attorney's office had been working with the supervisor to undermine the law in the first place. And this issue of, con this, is the po this is very, very strange. The issue of conflict, this is something the judge never addressed and will not be raised. Uh, essentially, instead, Amy Puerto uh, took the easy way out, relied on standing, uh, which meant that Borelli and Carroll's lawyer uh, was never properly hired, and so she was able to disregard his argument altogether on conflict, even though she herself raised the issue in, in the open court. And so, you know, most people that, that I've spoken to, every lawyer I've spoken to, has saw a blatant conflict of interest here because the town attorney serves at the pleasure of the town board. So the bottom line is that what's really happening here is that, is that, George has selected the attorneys who, on both sides, he's, he's a, the, the attorneys who are representing um, him and Franchino against the town and the town. And, uh, you know, so it, it doesn't surprise me, you know, that he's confident uh, about winning. Uh, it, it, well, now the judge is going to have to move on to the actual issue um, of, of the case. She has to just determine whether the term limits that are passed in 2015 are illegal or whether the supermajority uh, contained in the law is now illegal. Uh, and while Borelli and Carroll couldn't end up hiring outside counsel, that attorney is still uh, in the mix because uh, they're representing them as interveners, meaning that they can participate in this. And they're arguing that any issues that are related to how the law was passed in 2014 are time barred because um, there are two different kinds of statute of limitations, and effectively both of them have already passed. And so they're arguing that the supermajority provision doesn't render the law illegal uh, because and they're also arguing that, that, just, uh, that it doesn't render the law illegal because there are provisions in state law that allow for supermajorities. As we know, we have supermajority laws uh, all the time. Uh, when the town announces a clear intent, to impose a supermajority instead of a simple majority, even without a referendum, which is, is part of their, their argument. And so they argue that the case relied on by Holman doesn't really bind the local court. Now, it's, it's not going to clear you know, how this is going to play out. But one last thing I want to say before you rush me off the phone is, um, is that um, you know, I, I heard him mention that the judge has guaranteed that, that there's going to be a decision in two weeks. And e even this is, is quite unusual that the court would adjust its, its, its schedule to accommodate a politician's need to gather signatures. I mean, the decision should take whatever time it takes to fully brief and argue the case and allow the evidence that may be relevant. So just, uh, you know, just, just uh, again, another kind of watching a legal situation playing out here is uh, it, it's quite breathtaking. Uh, I did have a question with regard to that, but I, I, certainly okay. you've touched upon a lot, and there's a lot to touch upon there, but we are out of time, but we can extend that a little bit. Okay. Um, are you suggesting that the law, that the uh, judge should have made a decision based upon whether or not the attorney for the town has a conflict of interest prior to deciding whether or not the, the, the lawsuit should go forward, or 
or does that is that really not as relevant in this case yes, as the, as the attorney thinks as I'm sorry as the judge thinks yeah I, I I always I always qualify I'm not an attorney okay I have covered many many legal issues through the course of my rather long career mm -hmm. and yet the, the 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 very fact that she raised the conflict of interest uh, issue in the courtroom how was it raised and what under what context she 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 said um, to, she said to Kevin Conway, who's the uh, deputy town attorney representing the town, um, or at that point attempting to represent the town, right. she said, but doesn't this raise an appearance of conflict? Now, of course, he said no. Um, and, of course, um, the attorney that, uh, that um, Borelli and, and Carol have hired argued, of course, it, it raises a conflict, I mean, a, a blatant conflict. And the, the, the notable thing is that when she made her decision, on who was going to represent the town, she she did not even argue as to why there was not a conflict of interest here. She really took, I guess, the easy way out and just based the decision on standing, which was to say that um, that uh, the, the the attorney that was hired for outside counsel didn't have quote the standing, didn't have the right to be representing um, the, uh, the 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 plaintiffs in in this case. So. Um, I'm sorry, the defendants in this case. So it's it's really it's really stunning. I, it really is. I I think that there was a lot of surprise uh, with this decision, a lot of head scratching, um, and now the, 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 the case will move on to the issues themselves. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But again, this this whole notion of of, of it being rushed through to accommodate a schedule, uh, I just kind of you know raises it it, it uh, raises eyebrows. I think. Uh. We can argue that another time because I'm not sure that, I mean, at some point you do have to come down with a decision so that uh, so that schedules can be accommodated. And that's that's that happens in all facets of life. It's, it's not like it can go on and on and on forever, but that but, I guess we but can. Not, not usually in the courts. I mean, let, let's go back to the Rockland Cidery, for example. I mean, here's a business that's probably drowning under the weight of... Um, you know, of legal fees and, and, and you know, has, has equipment that's, that's being, that's empty. But, but those judges don't feel rushed um, by, by the circumstances of the business, for example. Or, or the neighbors. Or the neighbor, or, or that's what I was going to say, or the neighbors for that matter. I mean, I don't know if you've ever, you know, been involved in a, in a court situation, but, but it, let's just say it never feels rushed. It's really quite the opposite. They say the, you know, the wheels of justice turn very, very slowly. So when you see something like this, where he's got some guarantee that this is going to be resolved in two weeks as though, you know, it, it's something like an administrative issue, again, unusual. Unusual, in the, I, I'd say, in the context of, a cor of the courts. Well, it'll play out, and it'll play out uh, apparently quickly, and we will wait and see. And we know you'll be covering it in the pages of rcbizjournal.com. Uh, just go to rcbizjournal.com to find out more. Thank you, Tina, so much, and we'll talk to you again next Monday. Okay, have a great week. Thank you. you